In this video, we're going to do some more feature geometry problems in order to really demonstrate the two rules, spreading and delinking. So spreading is when a node is spread to its neighbors in three-dimensional space, and delinking is when a node is removed from its tree. And we'll see this with a couple examples. The first one I want to look at is called English debuccalization. And this is when you have these pre-glottalized stops that just become a glottal stops. So for instance, instead of picture, you might say picture. Or instead of not much, you might say not much. And just completely get rid of that pre-glottalized place altogether. Now, what we can see here is that we have a K, a T, and a P. These are all voiceless stops, and they're losing their place essentially. So the benefit of feature geometry is that even though these three have different places, we can probably capture that change in just one rule. So the rule essentially is that syllable final preglottalized stops become glottal stops. Now, how do we represent this in our tree? Well, what I have here is I have the tree for a preglottalized stop, and this is specifically our dorsal. So this is the case where we have the K going to just the glottal stop. So let's say I just want to do this one. Well, the first thing I need to capture is that it's syllable final, and we can do this just by using the same sort of notation we used in SPE phonology by putting a little bracket to the right side of the tree and then putting our sigma to indicate that it's the end of a syllable. Now, if I want to get rid of the place of the K and just take it to a glottal stop, I can just delink the dorsal feature. So if this is the case, then dorsal is completely gone and now it has no place and it just ends up as a glottal stop. But if I want to generalize, if I want to say all preglottalized stops become glottal stops, then I just delink the place entirely. So it doesn't matter what the place is, the sound now has no place, meaning that it defaults to a glottal stop. Of course, I shouldn't just remove the links entirely. I should keep them in and keep the double lines in to signal that this is the rule. But again, this is captured very easily with just delinking. Now, that's a case of delinking. We should look at a case of spreading as well. So we're going to talk about classical Greek regressive voicing, and there's two really cool things that we're going to demonstrate. The first one is that when you have a voiceless stop followed by a voice stop, the previous stop gets voiced, hence regressive voicing. So this TB, the B essentially sends its voice to the previous T. With D and K, the same thing happens, the K becomes a G. And then with D and P, well, that D is going to give voicing to P and it will become B. So how do we represent this with feature geometry? Well. From now on, we're going to treat voice as primitive, meaning that we don't need plus voice or minus voice. We can just have voice there, and if it's not there, then we delink it or assume it's minus voice. So what we'll do, we want regressive voicing. In other words, we want the voicing of the second sound to spread to the first sound. So this is exactly what it sounds like. All we're going to do is attach our laryngeal with voice to the previous sound. So this is spreading, but we really should do this with the dotted line to make it very clear that it's spreading. We could attach laryngeal here. But if we attach laryngeal to the sound, we're kind of generalizing a little bit at this point because we're saying, oh, it doesn't matter what's under layer. It'll take whatever it wants. So one thing we could do is, well, we could just say if it doesn't have voice, there's nothing there. And then voice essentially spreads. So this would be a better analysis at this point. But there's something else really interesting in Greek that happens. Aspiration spreads too. So if we have t and k, and k is aspirated, then that aspiration spreads back, and now t is aspirated. So you have like t, k. Same with p and t, and same with k and p. So how do we show this? Well, it's really just the same procedure. We could give our first sound laryngeal, and then we can spread plus spread glottis. Now, you'll see some generalizations, and 
I did show you the generalization first. Really, we don't need to just spread whatever is under laryngeal because we can just spread this entire node and then whatever it has, it will go to the previous consonant. So if we have two voiceless consonants, or say a voiceless consonant and a voice consonant, whatever laryngeal settings that second one has, it's going to spread itself to the first one. So this is a nice way with feature geometry. We can capture two totally different rules. One is about voicing regression, the other one is about aspiration regression, but we can capture it with the same idea. And this makes a little bit more sense biologically too, because we're essentially saying whatever's happening in your larynx for the second consonant's gonna happen for the first consonant. So this whole laryngeal setting is being shared from the second sound to the first. So that is spreading and delinking. What I would like to talk about really quick is the obligatory contour principle since it may show up in the future. Uh, essentially what it says is that two identical features should not occur in succession in the underlying representation. This is why we have a voiceless and a voiced becoming a voiced and a voiced instead of having two voiced in the underlying representation because the obligatory contour principle states that if two sounds ever share these same properties, it should be done by a spreading or delinking and not in the underlying representation. And we'll see this a little bit more with tones, stress, and other specifying features. As always, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them as quickly as possible.